Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Nigerian e-commerce sector was estimated to be worth 13 billion US dollars in 2018. However, economic stagnation in the country has been slowing down internet retail, according to Eurometer International. Still, the e-commerce sector has been growing in popularity amongst Nigerians, making the country a leading hub for e-commerce in Africa. Now, the online retailing channel relies heavily on consumption from consumers with higher income, and many people still prefer to have a face-to-face -face transactions rather than online shopping. Now, the most popular products category brought, um, bought online are electronics and fashion, and are particularly um, in very high demand amongst young adults. Now, if you run an online business or you prefer shopping online, let us know why. And please tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Your Africa One with the hashtag Waze or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 So I'm going to bring in our guest in two minutes, but I want you, Uti, quickly and Sanzi. Do you guys shop online? And what's been the experience like? Uti, quickly. Jumia obsessed <laughs> since the lockdown. <laughs> You tell yourself that I'm go okay. Some this thing runs out, or you're doing something at home, and you, you, you remember that I need to buy something. In the past, I'll, when I go to the shops, I need to make a note. Yeah. Now I just go on Jumia, <laughs> and Jumia knows. So every day Jumia is sending me why emails. You, why are you publish? Did they I'm pay not, you money? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What you ask me? <laughs> I, I don't. So I don't you have love online experience. shopping? I do. All right, so now, how about you? I don't have a good experience with the brand that she's been marketing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because um, I mean, I got. A, a laptop and I bought a couple of other things hair outfit shoes but there is this particular smartwatch I bought and it wasn't working and the way they hyped it I wore it I returned it on the fifth day I, I sent them a, a message they haven't replied me till today two months later wow. so I am upset and so every good credit I've given them I take it back oh my goodness yeah but, but do you do you enjoy the experience of online shopping in Nigeria Yes, but I mean, generally, I think online shopping can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So we were having a conversation before we came mm -hmm. um, on air about how, um, so I'm not going to mention again, <laughs> how a certain social media platform continues to present you mm. with True. the things that the you options. search for. And so it can be overwhelming. Mm. But if you're someone like me, I like to shop. I like okay. to find more things. Hey. All right. So Adi Ronke is I, okay. the founder and CEO of La Sode a fashion e-commerce market, um, marketplace platform. Ade has always um, held a penchant for running her own business, and she is the, she's best described as a fashion savvy conscious, and she carries a deep understanding of her target market, an ideal customer, as she is ethically Nigerian, inherently African, but also a British citizen. She started La Sode with the desire to meet a growing need in the African market, and she's joined this conversation to throw more light, throw more light <laughs> on <laughs> e-commerce. Thank you so much, um, Adi, for coming. Thank you. You look thank amazing, you. by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Thank so you I love for having me. In case they're Thanks. not seeing it, let me help them to say it. Beyond the box, I'm enough. Yep. I love that. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. Me. Thank you so, very much. Um, generally, um, um, COVID-19 came. You know, before, you would never pay attention to e-commerce. Mm -hmm. But something happened, and the whole world has gone, moved their buying and shopping everything has gone online it's almost like people you, right now some people are even scared to go to any physical store they'd rather just have the thing de <laughs> delivered <laughs> to them but l let's hear your own assessment in terms of the nigerian market how has it been so i mean it, it's actually quite interesting because um so we also did essentially is an e-commerce platform it's a marketplace platform so what that means is that we have multiple sellers on our platform that are able to reach multiple people and we've been sort of active for about i'd say we've been well i've had the idea for a long time we started operating about a year ago but really been active in terms of our platform going live in the last six months and what has happened is we have definitely seen a shift since COVID happened. So since everybody was locked down and people couldn't run their businesses, we've seen a massive shift. I mean, we're signing brands on continuously over the last few weeks. So people now understand that for your business to even stand a chance in the world we live in today, you do need to have a digital strategy. It's mm -hmm. not um, a cover, it's not even a, an option anymore for you to stand a chance. So whether you're a fashion designer or a small business, Whatever you are, you need to have some sort of digital strategy. You need to be online and visible online. Um, so that, that's really what's been happening. In terms of Nigeria, I, I really laugh when people talk about e-commerce. I'm like, we're doing it already. Hmm. We're doing it on WhatsApp. Okay. We're doing it on Instagram. We're doing yeah. it on Telegram, yeah. right? Yeah. 
the fact that you know the the brands that um, were mentioned earlier, so Juma and the Congas are the big ones. Doesn't mean I mean everybody and their dog is shopping online. Mm. And I know <laughs> I have friends that buy potatoes from See Kano. She's right here with you. And so yeah, so everybody's shopping online. But tell buying. you that the basket of onions I just ordered from Joss is, is it will be here in a week's time. So like I'm wondering, madam. Exactly. <laughs> so she hasn't seen the person face to face. Yeah. We're shopping online. So whether we like it or not, sooner mm. or later, we're going to. E-commerce is going to be the order of the day. Yeah. Right. We, or we need to be p properly positioned for when it does take off. And mm -hmm. I know that people have had bad experiences online. And you will have bad experiences online. I mean, there's always a quality issue. And also, those are things we've thought about. So not only mm -hmm. do you need online quality, you also need offline quality. You're looking at customer response times here. Yeah. How quickly does your seller respond to your customer? You know, for me, what is key and the thing we try to track consistently is that buyer expectation is met, is met. Mm. but not just that it's what what is by expectation it's, it's almost a formula by expectation equals buyer received what buyer got it mm. has to be the same like you can't if the expectation is, you know the the picture sorry to cut you know the picture on instagram that um what i ordered for and that's that's really the key thing mm. that the expectation is is met in mm. the first mm. instance as you said it's at least met so if they expect their goods in two weeks they get it in two weeks mm. if what was quality of the item gotten you know and that is what we really want to be measuring that that simple equation of expectation versus reality yeah, you know we want to consistently yeah. track that so i just wanted to ask and i'm glad that you mentioned about whatsapp instagram because i i always wonder what is there a definition does e-commerce mean i have to have a website or does it just mean any kind of electronic um transaction because like you said we've been buying via numerous types of non you know website traffic let me put it that way so what is the when we talk about this sort of figures that was mentioned from Euromonitor, what, what is actually encompassed in that space of e-commerce? I think I would call any transaction that happens via digital platform e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So anything that happens... So if somebody gives me your phone number now and I ordered the goods via phone, e-commerce has happened. I, well, we can call that telecommerce. Telecommerce. Well, but okay. I mean, okay. e-commerce <laughs> is... I go on Instagram, I see a product, I look at it. And, and I like I it and I order it. it. Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, I, I was joking about telecommerce, but a lot of the times the actual transaction happens it moves, offline. Yeah. Right? It moves to so telecommerce. Yeah. Exactly. So, right. I mean, how you take the payment mm -hmm. is what you're talking about mm -hmm. but where you have seen the item you know you're just calling at least in this space of the area of the world we're just calling to assure ourselves mm -hmm. in the uk if you want asos or mm -hmm. netapot or any of those platforms you very comfortably push a transaction through without worrying about it because those guys have already built a reputation for themselves yeah. but we just feel a lot safer and i think people need to understand that so i tell people i was in the, look i believe in e-commerce and I believe in it seriously. I, I'm not, it's not a joke. I've, I've, been, I've studied, I've looked at the market, but more importantly, I've experienced it. I was in the UK in the 2000s at the turn of the millennium where I remember the first time I plugged a modem into my laptop and I got on the internet. We didn't have the internet. So see where we've come from. Mm -hmm. And the last 10 years, after living in the UK for 19 years, my last 10 years, I only shopped online. And whether it was Gucci, Louis Vuitton, it was, you didn't have to go into Oxford Circus anymore. Like, people were moving goods all over the nation. And two companies literally started this, ASOS and Netta Potter. And now all of them are there. In fact, you can't exist. So, Miss Selfridge, um, Topshop, everybody has a presence online. Debenhams, everybody has a presence online. You can't exist. Now, that is the UK where you have a high street in every corner you can literally roll off your bed and roll into run into and, and roll into a mall mm. imagine africa where we have limited malls mm. you want to tell me that eventually e-commerce will not be the order of this the day this is the market it is it's it is yeah. we don't even have the physical infrastructure mm -hmm. so why so do have we think to yes okay so now I, I i understand what you're saying valid points absolutely now i was reading a report on punch uh newspaper an article on e-commerce and they said that about 70 percent um of, of nigerians know about e-commerce now out of that 70 percent 32 percent only managed to to go engage. to the site engage and then a certain a high percentage of that 32 only uh do window shopping so they go there see what they like and spring grab it and go to balogu market 
to buy it. Now, the, the reason uh, 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 during the Vox Pop, they said because they have trust issues and defective orders and all that. So I would like you to maybe address that in okay. details. Yeah. So I do that. And I'm talking about when I was in the UK. That's the whole idea about online. It's boundaryless and more people can access it. Mm -hmm. So I would go and type into Google iPhone 10. Mm -hmm. And see who's the cheapest, mm -hmm. who's the fastest, who's the best. You know what I mean? And look mm -hmm. around. Also check in the shops. That's just buying. Especially if we're women. If we're going to buy, we would check a million and one places. Except it was right. an urgent need. Mm -hmm. So you have some transactions that may end up happening in the market. That's okay. You, I, I could also go on ASOS to copy an outfit. Mm. Can we just be realistic about what we do? <laughs> you know, I could go on to Gucci and see all this fantastic Africa. My tailor. Come on, help me. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> sort it out. You know, so, I mean, it's not, it's not that. Yeah, yeah. E-commerce doesn't happen, but I will tell you what happened this morning. Yesterday, I was doing my nails, and I went on someone else's page, you know, nail art page, a Nigerian mm. girl. Now, I tell you, you know, whatever, I've used her before, so I know exactly where her shop was in, so Pimpers Road, Yaba. And as I looked at it, I, I saw the title, Nail Educator. I said, you have to be kidding me. This is um, <laughs> Moshe Yaba. Where did she <laughs> suddenly realize I need a funky name, Nail Educator? I said, okay, let me look. What we need to understand is, <laughs> let me look further. Ah, photo shoot for birthday. All these things that celebrities do, that the rich do, mm -hmm. trust me, they are coming. They are looking it's for ways to do it uh, cheaper. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we may be enjoying e-commerce today thinking that somebody in Yaba is not going to It's aspirational they will I join. Mean, guess what? In fact, we are, going to, we are planning to do a photo shoot. If I tell you all the number of pages that we have visited... <laughs> Exactly. I mean, it's, but it's interesting how the small person in Ikorodu there that you think will mm -hmm. never have the visibility. power, yes, the visibility to have own a store in Ikoyo or whatever. The person is doing so well online, mm -hmm. getting calls yes. to say, you know what, I want to do my nails, come to my, you know, yes. and the person is charging extra for that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to ask a question though. Mm -hmm. Do we really need to collaborate? Because you mentioned something about, you know, because Uti was asking that, do you need to go on a website? So my question is, because you are a collector, yeah, so right you, way. yeah, you are a platform where everybody comes on to say, you know what, I want to come and showcase what I'm selling on your platform. Do I really need you or can I stand on my own? Mm -hmm. What leverage would people p have when they put their stuff on something like Amazon or um, La Sode? You know, what benefit will it bring? Fantastic, mm. fantastic question. It's a fact that, so let's look at what, say, a standard social media platform does looks at you and your friends. So someone puts their stuff on social media, on IG, for instance. It's basically me and my network. Mm -hmm. And if someone in my network doesn't like it, so maybe someone likes it, then their friends see it or something. So the exposure is very, very limited, right? Very limited, regardless of what we think. So what a lot of fashion brands are doing is they, they make their stuff and then put it on a celebrity and then maybe someone in London sees it and then you suddenly feel that you have blown because mm -hmm. you have one order from London. London. <laughs> That's not the way. You know, I mean, the it's business, so it's about bringing in revenue, right? On a platform like us, people know that they're going there for fashion. They can browse through the many brands. There's a directory on there. You can see that. But besides that, when we come together, so a platform like also they, because we have the power, so we have banks approaching us and saying, you have a bunch of sellers on the platform. Mm. Let's see what we can offer them in terms of loans. How can we get them together? As an organization, we can put together better um, documentation that a small business might not be able to do that allows us to raise the kind of funds. Now, Absolutely. for Losuri to do what it really needs to do and to blow in, in across yeah, Africa, yeah. we're probably looking at that initial raise of about a million dollars. Mm. How many brands even need or want a million dollars, mm. right? So what we're trying to solve is a fragmentation within the industry. The industry is fragmented. It's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, fashion is everybody either does fashion on the side or is into fashion or likes fashion. Right. It's a huge industry. And at $31 billion, which was SSA, so mm. Nigeria was around $13, $14 billion worth. We're not even scratching the surface Seriously. of global fashion. Absolutely. Global yeah. fashion is five trillion. Wow. <laughs> so not, oh well, sorry, three trillion at the last report I looked at, and estimated five, five trillion, trillion in a few years. 
We're not scratching at the surface. We, we need to there. grow this well, market. I, I, you know so the way you're talking, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let us breathe more. We're going a short break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us.